Hey, welcome or oh, welcome back to 4 of Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, what I do know, and what you know, because quite clearly you've seen the thumbnail, read the title, and maybe you've even taken a bit of a peep at the description. This is my third collab with the Sweet Sixteen Girlies, and it's uh, a new one. It, I don't think I've ever seen anybody else do this. It's love the palette, hate the shade. So, I have got five palettes here, which are my favourite five palettes. I don't know palettes that is in my collection. So if you want to find out, you can probably guess what a couple of these are, but if you want to find out what all of these palettes are and what the shades are that I, I wouldn't say hate, I just use the least and more importantly what this looks like in a glorious Technicolor then my friend, you are in precisely the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and enjoy, because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Right, now, <clears throat> in the intro, I told you the name of this is Love the Palette, Hate the Shade. But I don't actually hate the shades that I'm using. So for me, this is more Love the Palette, but this is the shade that I've used least from the palette, rather than hating the shade, because I just don't. So this was the part that I showed you in the intro. You've probably guessed at least a couple of these, but I'll put you out your misery and I will also swatch the shades from each one. Oh, hang on, I missed one. Here we go. I will swatch the shades from each one to show you which is the shade that I've used the least. You can probably guess at least a couple of them. Right. So we started off with Jeffrey's Jawbreaker. And the shade that I have used the least from this one is Cone. Is anybody surprised? No. So I will just swatch Cone on the back of my hand there. And I've got a towel next to me that I'm wiping off onto. Next, the original slush. And the shade that I have used least from this one is actually Mango, this uh, orange up here. So I'll swatch that next to Cone. You can see why I said I don't actually hate the shade, because the shades are beautiful. Next, of course, is my absolute favourite. If I had to choose one palette, and I could only use that palette for the rest of my life. I see not do. And the shade that I have used least from this is Ash. Let's swatch Ash there. You can see that is a good black. It's difficult to find a good pigmented black, but that's that's a good one. Then we have the ABH Alyssa Edwards palette and the shade that I have used least from this one is Back Rolls which is this brown up here. Again, is anybody surprised that it's a neutral colour? There's that one. And then finally 
the lexicon palette from oh my glitter omg look at this look at how beautiful that is now when you order this i've got a discount code that you can use with them um, when you order this you can tell her what colors you want the um, planchette and what color you want the main palette to be i think you can also tell her what color eye you want because i'm pretty sure i asked for a green eye because of matching my green eyes this is what she looks like now i did ask why for example that's pink there and blue there it's because they're duochrome <laughs> so this is the shade they shift to um, and probably the shade that I've used least out of these is probably going to be Ouija, which is this one here. These are so soft and buttery, they really are beautiful. I'll just swatch Ouija. So there you go. For me, this is going to be a very toned down neutral look so like I said I don't hate the shade it's just the shades that I've used the least you now know my top five palettes as well that took me so long to, to narrow it down to five <sighs> wasn't easy I tell you the only one I knew for definite was Hasina slush and jawbreaker trying to narrow down the next two was just nightmare um i've got a discount code for slush i've got a discount code for blush tribe and i've got a discount code for omg so the only two of these palettes that i've not got discounts for are abh and jeffree star is anybody surprised by that no because i support UK indie brands and they very kindly offer me discount codes to offer to you all my codes are listed in the description box and they clearly state whether I earn from them or not right let's get you zoomed in um, this is actually a collab with all the girlies from Sweet 16 but unfortunately there's not going to be 16 of us I don't think this time because um, a lot of the girls have been unwell, which is such a shame. Um, they've either got colds or they've got styes or work has picked up and they just simply haven't got the time to join in. However, those who are taking part in this wonderful collab will be listed in my description box and the playlist will be listed in my description box so if you've missed any of the previous two collabs that we've done we did well the two that I've been involved in there was a there was a previous collab I believe before I joined the um, the, the the collab group <laughs> um, so I have no idea what that was I do apologize it's just me having a funny five minutes I think it's very early in the morning and I need more coffee um, right, yeah, there's um, the two that I've uh, been involved with prior to this was the musician inspired makeup and the Halloween in July. So, the playlist will contain all of the Love the Palette, Hate the Shade, or in my case, Love the Palette, Use This Shade the Least uh, films. And it'll also have all the previous collabs as well. So you can, I mean, if, you, if you're if you laid up unwell and you just want a playlist to sit through and have a lot of fun, that's definitely one I'd recommend. Now, I am a teaching channel, which means that that combined with my chronic pain means that mine's probably going to be the longest of all the films. Um, but I like to make it so that everybody of all skill levels can follow me. So if I'm going a little bit too slowly for you, there's a speed button up there. Just just speed me up to, I don't know, one and a half or one seven five or something. You may lose some of the ASMR element of my voice. 
but um, if, if you need to speed me up, it, I won't be offended because quite honestly, darling, I'm not going to know. Right, just quickly, um, I want to talk you through eye shapes because I've got deep set eyes. A lot of people with deep set eyes mistakenly are told or believe they have hooded lids because we have the same problems. We get transference of shimmer onto the upper lid. When we're cutting our crease, we can't just cut the socket. We have to go up onto the upper lid. And even when we use glitter glue, we get a bare patch right through the middle. Now, when I relax my brows and look straight ahead, you can see all of my mobile lid. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if your upper lid covers part or all of your lower lid that you have hooded lids or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. You can have a part hooded lid where only a part of, the part of it's covered, or you can have a full hooded lid. You can still follow my tutorials, you can still follow anybody's tutorials. Get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, and just on your static lid, create a new crease line where you want your crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, but just use slightly smaller brushes and you'll be absolutely fine. Um, I normally will put a darker colour through the crease um, and that will give you the illusion of that bit of the eye being further away so when people are talking to you it's not going to look like you've just created this extra crease it will look more like you have a crease there. Now, to show you the difference of deep set eyes if I cover the mobile lid, or the visible mobile lid this side and close my eye you can see I've got as much space again tucked back away. And if I cover the, vis the, the static lid and do the same, I've got again space there. So that's why we have the same issues. Now with ours, what you have to do is when you're putting colour through the crease, if you want it to show, you have to sit back, open your eyes, relax your brows and just see whether you can still see it. If not, bring it up a little bit more. It's as simple as that. Right, let's go with getting some colour onto these eyeballs. Uh, faces washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. And I'm using my eye primer from Crown Pebble. This is cotton, which is the white one. I got a sample pot from them and as you can see I have absolutely hit pan. So I've bought a full size one because this is by far the best eye primer I've ever used. Because, look it hasn't creased at all which is unheard of for me with primers and also it's not sticky so you can blend on it straight away which is another great thing right I've got um, some films linked in my description box one of them is brushes I recommend this is one of the ones from Aliexpress and this is brush number six so I'm gonna get some of cone on that and I'm going to start off by popping this. I normally leave sort of three or four mils below the brow just so that my brow highlight shows up nicely. And I'm just going to pop some of this on. So, how's your day been? Has it been a good one? Or are you watching me at the start of your day? If it is the beginning of your day, I hope you're going to have a good one. And if it's the end of your day, I hope you had a good day. And if you didn't have a good day, I hope tomorrow is better. Now I'm guessing there's going to be quite a few new people that have discovered me from some of the other beautiful women in this collab. So hi, hello, welcome to the 4F family. Uh, I'm a slightly nutty, half Welsh, half Yorkshire bird living in the south of England. So my accent varies depending on how tired I am, how much pain I'm in. All kinds of things. Whether I've been chatting to the Welsh side of the family or the Yorkshire side of the family, that particular side of the accent comes out more. But I'll do exactly the same thing this side. The important thing to remember with your eyes, they're not symmetrical. So you can do exactly the same shape this side and it won't look the same. So always sit back and check that the shapes you're doing with your brows relaxed because you don't want to run like this all day. 
Well, it makes you have really bad low tops. Well, super bad face lift. Um, just make sure they match. Now I'm actually blind in this side, which is why I can close this one and I can't close the other one. I do sometimes close the other one when I'm just blending a colour, but then I'm very much relying on muscle memory to make sure I'm doing it properly and uh, relying on luck and judgement that I'm still in frame and still in uh, focus. Okay, so that's cone. That's beautiful colour, but just it's the one I've used the least. As I said, for obvious reasons. Right, I have got a, a microfiber cloth here, which I use for cleaning my brushes on. I actually prefer this to a colour switch. Uh, it's a lot more gentle on your brushes, particularly if you've got high-end brushes or natural hair. These are actually synthetic bristles because natural hair can be difficult to work with and they can be quite scratchy. Right, now I'm going into the Alyssa Edwards palette from Anastasia and going into back rolls, which is the brown. Anastasia's little things of colour seem so small compared to Jeffrey's. And I'm just going to add this Starting off with windscreen wiper and then I'm just going to blend this about halfway up cone. Just circular movements when you go towards the nose and then reverse the direction when you come back again. And what that does is it gently moves the skin on your eye around so that you don't get any missing white bits or barcoding. Now, with the other eye, I do sometimes still get barcoding because where it was pulled around a lot when I was a kid, can you see how deep that crease is just there? Um, so I do sometimes have to actually stretch my lid out. I do not advise you to do that, otherwise you will end up with lids like mine, or this one anyway, that's got that super deep crease, and I promise you, once you get it, it only gets worse year on year, and you won't like it. But doing this circular movement in one direction and then back in the other, it gently moves the skin of the lid around look. I do it slowly. So it just helps to make sure that you've got every single bit of lid covered. Now, I'm 45 and I've lost... Actually, I've lost another three stone, my GP told me last time I went. So I've now lost uh, 13, 14 stone. Silicon straw, in case you're wondering to the environment and stuff. Although there are needs for plastic straws, particularly for people that are bedridden and need to be able to adjust the angle. Anyway, I'll get onto straws another time. Um, what was I saying? Um, this is one of my issues with fibro. I'll start a conversation, get distracted by something else and then lose track of what I was saying. Um, yeah, genuinely it's got, it'll come back to me eventually, probably when I'm editing this and I'll go, oh yeah, that's what you're talking about. Now I normally hold the brush right at the very end so I put as little pressure as possible on my lids. But if I'm doing very close detail work, like this, I'm trying to make sure I get it in that crease. So what I mean by the barcoding that I get here? I'll come closer up just so I have a little bit more control over it. Yeah, I always said when I started a channel, if I started a channel on YouTube, it would be um, a teaching channel because it's, it's, it's the one thing that nobody seems to do anymore. Um, and it's, it's, when I was learning, and I learned a lot from YouTube tutorials and just watching everybody else, some of it was instinctual, uh, but a lot of it is, you know, tips and tricks that you pick up. Although I did get a very nice compliment from Jessica, 
Just ask Hollywood Jessica, who's actually a trained makeup artist. She said she picked up some tips from me, but she didn't know. So I was like, oh, that's exciting. But this is what I mean about sitting back and checking that your shapes are the same. I think I need to bring this one a little bit higher up just there. Um, yeah, it's, it's something that annoyed me because so many channels were like, they do one eye on camera or they'll come to you with one eye done. And then, I mean, I don't know about you, but I, I tend to watch it on my phone in the mornings when I'm getting ready and stuff, when I'm not filming. And uh, it used to really bug me that I have to keep, they'd speed it up or they'd cut a section out, I'd have to keep pressing pause and then my screen lock would come on and I'm just like, oh for goodness sake, then they go, right, I'm going to do the other eye off camera and you think, right, so now I've got to rewind the tutorial and do the whole thing again, but in mirror image. Far too confusing. So I always said, even if it means my channel grows slowly, which it is, it's growing, but it's growing very slowly compared to most. Um, no, I'm definitely going to be a teaching channel. So that if you've never picked up a brush before, you can follow my tutorials. There, like that. Have you seen the new ABH Jackie Weiner palette? No way I'm buying that, I'm not supporting that woman. Not until she apologises to Petty Page on YouTube where she accused her. I'm currently blocked by her because I kept saying to her, when are you going to apologise to Page? When are you going to apologise to Paige? You complained about Geoffrey not apologising. When are you going to apologise to... She blocked me. Oh. Okay, you can dish it out, love, but you can't take it, huh? Hmm. But, um, Bow Diction. Uh, it's on my Instagram. I put a, a screenshot up. She actually compared the so-called unique shapes to both the Colourpop Good Sport and one of the Huda palettes, I don't support her either. I don't appreciate people that nick whole campaigns off of other people. Um, and the Good Sport palette, you've got 90% of the shades from that ABH palette, the Jackie Weiner. So, if, and let's face it, Good Sport is what, 16 bucks? And the Jackie Weiner one is 45 bucks. Simple economics, isn't it, really? Right, this is a Morphe M562. It's clean, it's just stained. A bit like my brows. And I'm going to go into Ash. In the Hasina 2 palette. I'm just going to run this through the crease to really deepen it up. Obviously you'll be running it if you've got hooded eyes and you've had to move your crease up. You will obviously be running it along your new crease that you've designed and you've decided where you want. I just keep sitting back and making sure that I'm bringing it up high enough here that it can be seen when I relax my brows. And I'm just going to very, very lightly, just on the actual line itself, do little circular movements just to just to soften the edges just a little bit so it sort of blends into the brown nicely. Mm, I like that. And then I'm going to pop a little bit of it on the outer edge of my mobile lid. This is the problem, it's great for crease work, but where it's so fluffy, it's not so good for doing this bit. I could change and use a different brush, but then that's another brush that will need cleaning on Sunday, so I'll just persevere with this one. I know, it's lazy, I don't care. But it could be that you've only got limited brushes, so I just want to show you that it can be done just with a little bit of patience. And you see the difference that makes in terms of definition of the eye? Love it. Yeah, I'm not quite sure who it was that came up with the idea of love the palette, hate the shade. It's a good idea though, because I mean, there, there usually is at least one shade in the palette that you find yourself 
I'm not using. Like I said, with me, it's not that I hate the shade. It's just that it's not one that calls to me. I don't hate the shade. I just don't use it very much. Because regular viewers will know I normally have very, very colourful looks. So for me, this is super neutral. I'm just glad that I've got lexicon and slush in there because at least I'll be getting some colour on my lids. Go on, hands up. Who guessed mine was going to be a mainly neutral look? Hmm? Oh, that's what I was doing. I was telling you who I am, wasn't I? Darth Bint. <sighs> yes, so as I said, depending on who I've been chatting to, depends what my accent sounds like on the day. Cushion and favourite and favourite, depending on, like I said, which side of the family I've been chatting to most recently and how tired I am. The more tired I get, and the more drunk I get, the more Welsh I sound, apparently. I don't know. It's not often I get drunk anymore. Partly because of the tablets I'm on for chronic pain, and partly because every time we go anywhere because of chronic pain, I'm always driving. Because the hubby's got a forklift licence, but not a car licence. Pretty sure that's strategic on his point, so he's never the designated driver on a night out. Cheeky. Yeah, it's normally me that drives people everywhere, so... Up the wall if you are some of you, mate, I think. Yeah, I'm not quite sure who it was that came up with us at this idea, but I really love it. One of the clever bods in the... Uh, in the group, that is for sure. Right, let's clean this brush off. I love doing collabs with big groups like this. It's it's nice that the smaller, the micro beauty community is kind of showing the large beauty community exactly how they should be behaving. We don't collab to gain more followers. We collab because we like the person we're collabing with. You know, it's just... I don't know. I just wish more people in the larger beauty community would be nicer to each other. Right, I'm going into slush and I'm going to go into that mango shade. Never ever go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. And then with my Morphe M321, I'm going to pack this with pigment, and then I'm going to spray it. Now I'm using I Heart Rev Fixing Spray in vanilla and coconut because the weather's starting to close in, summer's going, yay, the heat is going. Um, always dry your ferrule off by sort of twiddling it around in, in the crook of your fingers like that, so that you don't get any moisture going down and loosening the bristles there and then I'm just going to apply this to the first part of my lid now um, you don't have to use a setting spray you can use anything to wet the pigment with you can use a moisturising spray like MAC Fix Plus or Mario Badescu. You can use setting sprays, priming sprays, and you can even use just, just plain water. All you're doing is, is wetting the pigment. I'm going to clean and dry the brush off and then go back in again to do the other eye. Because with the deep creases on that eye, I do have to stretch it out when I'm putting a shimmer on. Otherwise, it's sort of it fills the crease up, but because it's not blended, it just sort of like packs into the crease. Um, as it then dries out through the day, and I move my eyes, I end up getting a shower of multicoloured freckles, which, if you're looking for that result, it's great. But, um, yeah. But this is not foiling your lids. A lot of people say, oh, I'm going to foil the shadow, and then they just wet the brush. That's not foiling your lids. Foiling your lids 
is mixing a pigment with a liquid until it forms a paste to apply to your face. That is forming a pigment. This is just applying a pigment wet. Now yes, I could have cut my crease, but that's not the look I was going for for today. And yes, I know this orange is going to transfer up, but you know what? I don't care. <laughs> Doesn't show when my eyes are open and I'm not planning on going to sleep anytime soon. Right, clean the brush off. Thank you, Slush. And... Lexicon. And Ouija. Yeah, my mate Robin does uh, OMG and my glitter. And um, long before I had a channel, I kept bugging her to do me a liquid lipstick that was purple with silver in it, which she did, and she named Bombalicious after me, which I thought was lovely. It's out of stock at the moment. I'm, I'm, actually, I'm bugging her at the moment to do me a bullet version of it. So. Just pop this on the second half of the lid and then just slightly drag the orange across onto it like so. So we get a nice blend where the two colours meet. Oh I like that. I actually like that pop of orange just on its own. Hmm. Yeah. That looks good. Even if I do see some myself, I shouldn't. Oh, I witter quite a bit, and I. My husband's the pun master, so. You will sometimes find me saying something that's very pun worthy, because. Well, I live with someone long enough, it rubs off, doesn't it? Oh, you can really see the duochrome now, look. Can you see that sort of bluey shade that it looks? And then if I do that, you can see the burgundy. Hey! Robin, I managed to get the duochrome to show up on camera. Love it. If you want to see me do a look with the lexicon palette, let me know. Hmm. I like that. I like that a lot. Right, I'm going to pause you now while I go off camera and do foundation and stuff and I will be back to finish off this eye look. So you're going to see me instantly. I will see you the very next time I press the record button. I am back, as you can see. I decided to go for normal brows today seeing as how it's a normal look. Most unlike me. Right, going in with this flat top brush again, and I'm going to go back into Ash. I'm just going to run that, connect it with the edge there, and just run that along the lower lash line. Both sides. This is probably the most neutral look I've done on my channel for months. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, there's going to be some people that have got really, really brightly coloured looks because they normally wear neutrals. And there's me in a look you could go to work with. Well, maybe not. Right, this is the brush that was in the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. I like it because it's flat on top but it's chunky so you can really get up under your lashes. Mm -hmm. And then go back into slush. And I am going to pick up some mango. And I'm going to run that along the lower lash line. Just to buff that black out and soften it. 
and because I need a little bit more colour on my face otherwise I don't feel like me and seeing as how the orange is the only bright colour I've got that's the colour I'm going to use It works well though. Hmm. Right now for oh, now for highlight. Uh, I think I will grab. I might use this one for a while. I might use this one. This is with Jeffrey Supreme Frost in Wet Dream. This is the proper glittery one. This is a lip brush that I bought off of eBay about 10 years ago. But lip brushes are great for getting up under the tail of your brow. And for doing your inner corner. Now I like to carry mine along under the tear duct and join it up with the shades that I've got coming under my eye. If you don't want to do that, you can just leave it as the inner corner like that. But mm -hmm. for my particular shape, eyes, this is the best, for me I find anyway. Right, I'm going to pause you one more time while I go and chuck highlight over the rest of my face, do some mascara, choose a lippy, and I'll be back with my final look. I am back. Uh, the lippy is one of these Revolution Sheer Brilliant in shade... Oh, why do they do it so damn small? Val. Mascara is the Essence Lash Princess, the green one, and obviously you know which highlighter it is, and the setting spray is my Gerard Cosmetics Slay All Day in Coconut. So, this is my final look for Love the Palette, I hate the shade, aka Love the Palette, but these are the shades I use the least. It's actually a really wearable look. I say it like that because for me wearable is a, a luminous fluorescent green cut crease with a shamrock one side and a, an electric liner the other side and you know. I've wandered around Tesco's looking like a zombie before now. Literally a zombie. You need to watch the Halloween in July film to find out about that one. Right so here you go that is my offering for this group collab. I really hope you enjoyed it. Now, if you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you're still subscribed because people are still being unsubscribed. Thank you very much, YouTube. Um, and then once you double check that, please pop across and check out all the other girlies' films. If, however, you are new to my channel, hi, hello, welcome. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you're not entirely sure whether you're going to want to watch more from me, then uh, maybe stick a couple of my films into your watch later folder and then uh, continue to watch the rest of the collabs in this series. Then maybe come back, check out a few more of my films and see whether you think you can put up with watching this slightly nutty bird. Uh, a little bit more often and maybe you could turn the subscribe button from red to grey for me. Right. I'll make this as short and sweet as I can because I want you to go and watch all the other films as well. So all that remains for me to say as ever is you'll stay fabulous. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.